Hey creative, I'm Eric, a graphic designer based in New York City. In this video, I'm visiting my wife's family in New Orleans. I want to invite you to come with me on a creative walk through the Bywater, a neighborhood in New Orleans. Actually, it's just Bywater. I'm pretty sure my family's gonna make fun of me for calling it the Bywater. We'll be checking out the neighborhood's unique architecture, murals, and the street art. Whether I'm in New York, traveling to familiar places like New Orleans, or new places, I love taking creative walks. My wife is from New Orleans, so we try to visit whenever we can. And Bywater holds a special place in my heart because we had our wedding reception here in this neighborhood in 2019. Why go on a creative walk? Well, experiencing art and culture in the real world, AKA away from my clawfish, is the quickest way for me to tap back into my creativity and myself. Walking also reduces my stress, and this past year has been very stressful. I got laid off from my job, I had a death in the family, and then I started my own design business. So yeah, it's been a lot. Bywater is surrounded by the neighborhoods, the Marigny, St. Claude, and Lower Ninth Ward, and it's only about an 11 minute drive from the French Quarter, which is the area most people probably think of when they think of New Orleans. Bywater used to be called Upper Nine, as in Upper Ninth Ward. Some people say Bywater got its name simply because of the fact that it borders the Mississippi River, so it's literally by the water. Others believe that the name came from an old telephone exchange that existed here a long time ago. On our way to Bywater, we stopped at St. Coffee, which is technically in St. Claude, to grab a quick coffee and something for sustenance. A short drive over the train tracks and we're in Bywater. Walking through some of these gorgeous streets made one thing very clear, and that is that Bywater has an undeniably artsy and eclectic feel, and it was a really welcome and refreshing change from New York City, from the homes to the lush greenery and beautiful murals. It felt like a really great opportunity to get inspired. This neighborhood doesn't shy away from colorful exteriors either. A lot of the architecture in New Orleans is heavily influenced by French and Spanish colonial styles and is reflective of New Orleans as a territory that was bought and sold by different countries prior to the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. If you ever visit New Orleans, you'll find townhouses, Creole cottages, Greek revivals, and Italianate style homes. You'll also find shotgun style homes, known for their narrow layouts, you could shoot a gun from the front of the home and the bullet should be able to go straight through to the back. This made for great airflow in hot, humid New Orleans. As a designer, I'm always thinking about unique and interesting color combinations that I can use in my branding or my poster design work. Bright purples and teals, yellows and magentas, and other combinations were really catching my eye. I think there's also something to be said for seeing all of these colors in real life right in front of you versus looking at them on a screen. When I did come across a cool color combo, I decided to use this awesome app on my iPhone called Pantone Studio. This app allows you to use the iPhone camera to pick up the color values from anything you point the camera at and save them. You can then call these color palettes up and sample the same exact color values inside of Photoshop, Illustrator, or any other piece of design software. So I saved a few of these as we continued to explore the neighborhood for other cool and expiring finds. One of my favorite features of these houses are the wooden porch brackets. I think some of these are probably structural and help support the weight of the roof, but others can also be more ornamental. And what's really cool about these brackets is how complex and detailed some of them are. And they were catching my eye because they reminded me of those decorative, ornate vector embellishments that you will see being used on vintage or retro logos, and also for things like invitations and flyers. I personally love busting these out because they can really add elegance to a design, just like they do these houses. It also made me think about design in the sense that when it's done right, everything should be working together harmoniously. It's not just about the color, it's also about the details and the embellishments. Everything has a purpose and is inspired by different time periods and culture. On the walk, I stumbled upon a couple of really nice murals, and as I got closer to the train tracks, I spent some time walking around the area where Studio B is located. Studio B is actually a 35,000 square foot warehouse that showcases the work of local artist Brandon B. Mike Odoms. B. Mike is an artist, an activist, and a mentor, and he is known for creating large-scale illustrations and portraits of black leaders and icons. I love that his style doesn't try to be hyper real where it looks like it's just a painted copy of a photo. 
it's much more stylized, expressive, and unique. I didn't get to check out the inside of the studio space on this visit, but it's definitely something I'd like to do the next time we're in town. I have to say though, even just walking around the outside of the studio, I was really in awe of these beautiful, colorful renderings on the buildings. And I was equally impressed by the sheer scale of the work. These portraits are absolutely massive, and even the typography-based designs we saw around this area were so full of energy and style. I think that this year has been a year of me trying to find new ways to look for and feel joy in everyday experiences. For a long time, I felt like I only had time to work and that everything I do has to be for the sole purpose of making money. And I found that after giving all of my energy to work, I didn't have any energy left for myself to pursue any of my interests or hobbies. I've thought about this a lot this year and I do think I've made some good progress but still have a ways to go. Since I had been thinking about this so much, it was kind of serendipitous that I found this joy wall by Portland artist Gary Hirsch. Gary creates bot murals like this all over the world, and this mural was made by Gary and a handful of local artists and students as part of the NOLA mural project. For some reason, the style reminded me a little bit of Ren and Stimpy, which was an awesome but also super weird cartoon that I used to watch as a kid. I think maybe it's the exaggerated features and expressions that just feel so alive. There's also a little bit of where the wild things are that I'm feeling, maybe because of the muted tones and the use of lines and dots to create texture and shading in the illustrations. I stopped here for a few minutes to take it all in and reflect on the question again, what brings you joy? And personally, I think this is something that all creatives and artists should ask themselves in order to remember not to neglect those parts of ourselves that inspire us to create in the first place. I hope that you enjoyed taking this creative walk with me today through Bywater, and I hope that it brought you some inspiration and just some joy as well. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to go ahead and check out my other creative walk video where we explore some awesome looking artwork in the Dumbo section of Brooklyn. All right, creative, thanks so much for watching, keep designing, and we'll see you in the next one.